Hello, my name is David Benheim, and in this video, I'm going to show you reasons why I think the new Microsoft Edge is better for web browsing. Now, I say it's the new Edge. This is not the one that comes pre-installed with Windows 10. If you want to learn how to get this, then I have tips at the end of this video. I have tons of videos that I release about tech content, so please consider hitting the subscribe button if you want to get more of that. So let's get going. My number one thing, and I think this is the best thing to have happened to web browsers since multiple tabs, is this thing called collections. That opens up a sidebar over here, and it's great for research. Go to one that I've pre-built, Coronavirus News, and I can add the current page to this. It could be a mixture of anything. It could be uh, just an image or just some of the text in here, as well as the full page. And what can you do with that? You can easily browse to it whenever you need to, or if you want, you can send to Excel, Word, or open all these links, and it opens up a new window with all of those links. So you can also send them to someone else through the copy all feature. And it's great for just arranging lots of things, really good for shopping as well. So here you can compare, for example, ties, and I've got microphone stands as well. The export to Excel is great for shopping things because it gives you the price, the rating as well, and automatically does that for you when it's from a supported data source like Amazon. If you like this feature and you want to learn more, then I've got a dedicated video to just collections because I think it's that useful uh, that I'll link to here as well. And now let me show you some other things that I really like about the new Edge. If you are playing a video or a sound in another page, you can just click here and share his documents. And that can just mute and unmute what you have there. Here we have the same five tabs open in both Chrome and Edge. And just to show you that, let me put them side by side. So I'll put this on one side and this is Chrome on the other side. So as you can see, it's the same five tabs. And now if I press Control Alt Delete, as it loads up, you can see that Chrome is actually taking quite a lot more memory and higher CPU amount as well compared to Edge. They are constantly changing, but broadly you can see that Chrome is sort of eating up your CPU and your RAM a lot more than Edge is. Let's see how it compares in terms of uh, loading up sites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect my internet. So let me paste in a URL of a site in both of them to give it a fair test. And let me now reconnect my internet. So on the left, we have Chrome. On the right, we have Edge. Let's see how they compare. So now it started loading up. You can see that that's sort of doing it. There you go. Edge did that a lot faster, didn't it? Yeah. This is a site that has quite a lot of GIFs and other features. It's actually a website article that I wrote. Uh, so yeah. I find Edge is generally faster, but there are sometimes exceptions and it does vary. And a couple of other quick things. So if you do want to open up a private browsing window, so Control Shift N does that, then on Edge, it just gives you this that tells you a little bit more about what is being private and what isn't in this setting. Notice that in Edge is called in private browsing versus incognito in Chrome. You also have some features in the settings pane to do with privacy. So if you go with privacy and services here, you get these three options. And this is about websites using trackers to collect information about what you're browsing. You have basic, balanced, or strict. Strict, as you might expect, is the one that blocks the most and basic blocks the least. But with strict, parts of certain sites might not work. So yeah, you can quite easily change that between them. And finally, customizations that you have for the starter page. So if you open up a new tab, this is what you get. Notice that it connects to your Office 365 if you're logged in, so it's just way more businessy than the other ones. But if you don't like that, you have this sort of thing here, and you can say you wanna see news instead. And on the top, you have 
the links. This is the one that I like. And at the bottom, you have this sort of news or Office 365. You can choose between these three page layout options, whether it's like that, like this, or informational with all. I prefer to go with the most, which is informational and Office 365 because I tend to use this for business. So you have your recommended files, certain pinned ones, and also over here, you can just launch your apps as needed. Uh, it does default to this being Bing, but I changed that to Google. <laughs> Another feature that is pretty cool is you can get it to read for you. Uh, really good for accessibility. So you can select some text, right click and choose read aloud section. Meeting software, channel based chat, clap. Or if you want to read the whole page, you can click on these three buttons and you can press read aloud. Cloud storage, planning tools. There you go. And then you have these sort of things to edit or fast forward as well. If you did want to switch over, it's pretty simple. The first time you open it, it asks you whether you want to import from Google Chrome. Actually, Microsoft Edge is built using the Chromium platform. So it's the same open source platform that Google Chrome is based on, which means that the look and feel is very, very similar, except for some of those key differences. You might want to sign into it. So here I'm signed in with my work account. You can also sign in with a personal Microsoft account. That is sort of key to making it work a lot better, particularly key to getting the corporate functionality working. If you want to, for example, just access your own app launcher inside your company on your Office 365. Now, as I said before, the default edge that you get with Windows 10 is not the one that I'm demoing here. This one is the new edge. So to get it, you just search for it. So right, download edge. And then you have download new Microsoft Edge browser. And then you just sort of follow the instructions on here. Download for Windows 10. You also have equivalents for Mac OS, iOS and Android or other Windows versions. Then you just follow the instructions as you go along. It is expected that in a release of Windows 10 later this year, the new Edge will be the default browser, which I really hope because it's so much better now that it's built on Chromium. All right, so if you like this video, then please hit the like button and you can subscribe for more great content on software tech and how to use it.